The question we're going to address in this tutorial is whether you should use a separate encoding letter for smartphones and for all other devices. And we're going to measure that with SimPlus and with VMAF. By way of background, most producers use the same ladder for all target devices, whether it's smartphone, 65-inch television set, or computer, or even iPad. However, we know that different playback devices have different quality characteristics. A video that looks great on an iPhone may look terrible on a 4K TV set, and you don't need 4K TV quality to look good on an iPhone. So the question again is how can you use video quality metrics to define encoding ladders for different devices? And the basic technique is this. You produce your ladder, you measure the necessary quality levels using different device presets, and then you customize the manifest for different targets. And we'll come back to the manifest thing uh, in the last slide of this tutorial. So here are the tests that we performed. We used eight different test clips, Big Buck Bunny, which is a simple animation, the fight scene from the movie Electra, a football clip for, from Harmonic, which is pretty high motion, a concert video entitled Freedom, one of my own shots, which is also high motion, a Haunted House teaser, which is high motion as well, Sintel, which is a more complex animation than Big Buck Bunny, Tears of Steel, which is mixed real world and computer graphics, and the first five minutes of Zoolander, which is a lot of motion, a lot of bright lights, uh, flash bulbs, and a very difficult to encode scene. And then we encoded all the clips to the top four rungs of this encoding ladder, as you can see on the right. And then we measured the rungs using SimPlus using presets for a television, a tablet, and an iPhone. And then with VMAF, we measured using the default preset and the smartphone preset. A little bit of background about SimPlus. SimPlus scores map easily to subjective ratings. So 0 to 20 down here is bad, 20 to 40 is poor, 40 to 60 is fair, 70, or I'm sorry, 60 to 80 is, is good, and 80 to 100 is excellent. So any scores here should be good enough for, for general purpose viewing. And the thing that's unique about SimPlus is it comes with a, an excellent range of device templates. So if you want to test with a specific device, whether it's an airplane entertainment panel or a particular smartphone or a particular computer screen or TV set, typically you can do that. So here are the eight files measured using SimWave with a device preset for a 65 inch television set. So here are the clips here. And then we've got a 432p version. And we see that all of those scores were under 80. So these scores would not look good on the 65 inch television set. At 540p, most are under 80 as well. So the encoding ladder that we're using, which goes up to above 80 at 720p and even higher with continued improvement to 1080p makes a lot of sense. So not recommending any changes for 65-inch television set. So this is very similar to the 65-inch TV set because it's a relatively high-resolution device, and we're, we're looking at it from arm's length distance as opposed to the 65-inch TV set, which is probably 3 to 4 meters away. So again, this would be a good ladder for this device. And now we look at the iPhone, and if we go back and forth, we start to see significant differences in the quality levels relating to this preset. So again, we're using the SimWave tool to score the eight files based upon viewing on an iPhone. And what we see is at 432p, all but two of the files are above 80. At 540p, all of the files are above 80, except for the hardest to encode file, which is the Zoolander clip. At 720p, they're all above 80. And at 1080p, we're only seeing minor improvement. It's a pretty flat rate from here to here. Hard to argue that you'd want to include a 1080p rung using these results. OK, now let's take a look at the VMAP scores. By way of background, again, there's a mapping between the scores and the predicted quality levels. Scores range from 0 to 100, with 80 to 100 being excellent, 60 to 80 good, 40 to 60 fair, 20 to 40 poor, and below 20 bad. And 93 is the relevant target with VMAF, and let me, let me talk about what I mean by that. So the CTO of Rural Networks wrote a paper entitled VMAF Reproducibility, validating a perceptual practical video quality metric, and he tested multiple 4K 2D videos, and he found that when the VMAF score was above 93, the content was either indistinguishable from the original or with noticeable but not annoying distortion. So from my perspective, a score of 93 means that video has high enough quality. And here's a, a bit.ly URL you can, you can use to go look at the article. So looking at the models 
available in VMAF, you've got the default model, which assumes that viewers watch a 1080p display from a viewing distance of 3x the screen height. The phone model, which assumes you're watching on a mobile phone, presumably from arm's length distance away. And then the 4K model, which is video displayed on a 4K TV and viewed from a distance of 1.5 times the height. Now, what we looked at here was the difference between the original and the phone model. Didn't do any 4K testing. And then here's the Eclipse, and in all the clips, the default model is in blue and the phone model is in red. And what we see using VMAF phone model with the Big Buck Bunny clip, relatively easy to encode clip, all the scores were above 93, including the 432p clip. On the other hand, in using the default model, you needed the 1080p clip to get above the 93 threshold, which is the dotted or the dashed line here. Electra, same deal. Using the phone model, all the scores were above 93. In fact, they were all above 95. Using the default model, only the 1080p clip was above 93. And it's a pretty familiar pattern through all the clips. Football was probably our hardest to encode click, except for perhaps Zoolander. And here we see that we needed a 540p version to get above 93 using the phone model, and that even at 1080p using the default model, we were close to 93, but we didn't quite achieve it. And then with Freedom, again, this is the music video clip. All of the phone model scores were above 93. With the default model, only the 1080p was above 93. Haunted is the Haunted House teaser. Again, all the phone model clips were above. Only the 1080p default model clip was above the 93 threshold. Sintel, relatively easy to encode clip. All the phone model samples were above 93. The Only the 1080p clip using the default model was above 93. And then Tears of Steel, all the phone model scores were above 93, and only the 1080p was above 93 using the default model. Zoolander, probably our toughest clip, but still all of the phone models were above 93, and only the 1080p version was above 93 using the default model. So here's the overall scoring. Again, default is in blue, red is in phone. And on average, for the eight clips, all of the 432p clips were above 93, and only the 1080p clip was above 93 using the default model. So looking at this data, there's a good case to be made that the smartphone manifest should stop between 540p and 720p, but that you want to keep tablets and other targets as is. Now before implementing, you want to run your own series of tests. And what I would recommend doing is identify a set of short test clips, maybe in the 20-second range, encode to the usual encoding letter, and then test the higher rungs of the encoding letter on smartphones, like we, like we saw we did using the video quality metrics, to determine the optimal top rung, meaning you know, verify the objective quality metrics with your own subjective tests. And then when you implement this, create a separate main manifest for smartphones, identify smartphones during the initial handshake when a smartphone hits your website, and then send them the smartphone manifest, which doesn't have the higher quality, more expensive files to distribute. Because as we've seen, the 1080p clip, which is much more expensive to distribute, isn't going to look that much better than the 540p clip when viewed on a smartphone.